A week ago on Dynamite, the flagship TV show of All Elite Wrestling, former world champion John Moxley was scheduled to wrestle Brian Kendrick, a veteran of over 20 years who has worked and found success in WWE, Ring of Honor, TNA, now called Impact Wrestling, and New Japan. Then, the day before the show, a video clip of Kendrick from 2011 began circulating on Twitter. In the clip, which is taken from an interview Kendrick did for the conspiracy theory website Truth is Scary, Kendrick endorses a number of anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, including the idea that a medical team sent from Israel to assist in relief efforts following the 2010 earthquake in Haiti had actually been dispatched to harvest organs from quake victims. After the clip went viral, AEW owner and President Tony Khan tweeted that due to his, quote, abhorrent and offensive comments, Kendrick had been pulled from the show. While not widely known to the general public, it was no secret among wrestlers and wrestling fans that Brian Kendrick is a conspiracy theorist. He hasn't exactly been shy about it. The Truth is Scary clip being shared on Twitter was only 30 seconds long. The video it was taken from lasts eight minutes in total. In it, Kendrick also asserts that the killing of Osama bin Laden was a hoax, that the 9-11 attacks were an inside job, the airplanes that appeared to crash into the Twin Towers were holograms, and the towers were actually destroyed by hurricane-force winds created by a device developed by HAARP, H-A-A-R-P, the Defense Department research project that has been a favorite boogeyman of conspiracy theorists for decades, that the moon is a secret base controlled by reptilians, which they use to keep our souls trapped here in the third dimension so that we can't access the fourth dimension where they exist. Kendrick believes this in part because, as he puts it, the moon just doesn't look right. And that the world is controlled by the Illuminati, which of course consists of the descendants of 13 bloodlines, which are also part reptilian. The secret Zionist organ harvesting in Haiti is the most egregious bit in that particular video, so it's no wonder that's the clip that got folks talking. The rest of it is pretty wacky, but superficially innocuous. Kendrick comes across as the sort of affable doofus that many of us know in our own lives. The cousin or uncle or friend from high school who smokes too much weed and mistakes his own misinformed incredulity over widely accepted facts for a kind of renegade wisdom, who warns us not to trust the government or the media, and harbors a wide range of sincerely held but poorly reasoned beliefs about the way things really are. In the Truth is Scary video, Kendrick doesn't seem angry or malicious or hateful. He expounds upon his preposterous theories with bemused detachment and leaves the impression of a dude who believes this stuff because he's too dumb to know how dumb he sounds. He's a fool, but he seems harmless. The problem is, while Kendrick and the conspiracy theories he is endorsing in that video might seem mostly harmless, that doesn't mean they are. Two years after that Truth is Scary video, Kendrick appeared in a video produced by High Spots, a company that specializes in wrestling shoot videos. And for you non-wrestling fans, a shoot video is when a wrestler gives an interview talking about their career and the wrestling business from a real-world point of view, out of character, as it were. In this video, titled Brian Kendrick Presents the Kendrick Theory, Kendrick, have I said fucking Kendrick enough already? Kendrick voices his belief in even more conspiracy theories. The actual video is no longer available on the High Spots website, so I'm quoting from a summary written by Andrew Lutsky and published on the website Culture Crossfire shortly after the video's release in 2013. According to the summary, Kendrick believes that the Sandy Hook Massacre, where more than two dozen people, including 20 children, were murdered, was a hoax designed to facilitate gun confiscation, that JFK was actually shot by someone in his own car, that Elvis and Michael Jackson faked their deaths, 
that the U.S. government is developing a zombie virus and has been orchestrating the release of more zombie-related media in order to prepare the public, that the moon landings were faked by Stanley Kubrick, that the CIA controls politicians by drugging them and staging photo shoots with child prostitutes, and that the Earth is hollow and Hitler once sent 10,000 troops to Antarctica to search for the entrance to the inner Earth. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. He's a Holocaust denier too. According to the Culture Crossfire summary, Kendrick says that the number of deaths in the Holocaust was greatly exaggerated in order to justify the creation of the State of Israel, that the gas chambers were actually for de-lousing, and that Allied troops staged concentration camps in order to further the lie of the Holocaust. After all of this became news last week and he was pulled from the AEW show, Kendrick posted a series of tweets that read, I apologize for all the hurt and embarrassment I have caused with my words. These are not my beliefs and never were beliefs of mine, and I crossed the line. I spread the most vile comments without thinking of the damage it would cause. I will live with this regret for the rest of my life. I am truly sorry for the pain I have caused. Apologies for past sins that are only offered after those sins have been uncovered are always suspect in my book, but if his regret is genuine, I hope he uses it to motivate change and growth and learning. And the first thing I hope he learns is that it doesn't matter if he ever actually believed any of that stuff or not. I'm dubious of his claim that these were never beliefs of mine, since he stated them repeatedly, in detail, in public, and never gave any indication that he was being ironic or sarcastic or anything other than genuine when he did so. But for the sake of argument, let's just give him the benefit of the doubt and assume he's telling the truth in his apology, and that these conspiracy theories were not things he ever actually believed. It doesn't matter what he believed. What matters is what he did, and specifically, what he said. The conspiracy theories promoted by Kendrick in the clip from 2011 may have appeared harmless. I'm of the opinion that there is no such thing as a harmless conspiracy theory, because even the most seemingly innocent ones, like the notion that the Earth is flat, encourage people to abandon critical thinking, reject expertise, and remain willfully oblivious to their own ignorance and bias. A population full of proudly ignorant people who reject basic facts about history and the world is not something any of us should want. But beyond that, even the seemingly harmless conspiracy theories espoused by Kendrick mask something far more sinister and pernicious. After I found out that Kendrick believed Israeli relief workers were part of a Zionist organ harvesting conspiracy, it didn't surprise me to learn a few hours later that he was also a Holocaust denier. Once you've embraced one anti-Semitic conspiracy theory, why stop there? Dig deep enough into almost any conspiracy theory and eventually you find a core of anti-Semitism. Hatred and suspicion of Jews and conspiracy theories are so inextricably intertwined that you almost never find one without also finding the other somewhere nearby. Sometimes it's right out in the open, as with Holocaust denial. Sometimes it's disguised in euphemisms and dog whistles, like the media or the intellectual establishment. But it always winds up pointing the finger at the same imagined enemy and enticing those gullible enough to take these ideas seriously to ask the same question. What are the Jews up to? Jewish people are not only othered, they're framed as threats, as ruthless authoritarians whose influence is felt everywhere, and as chameleons capable of infiltrating any institution and bending it to their will. In the years since the end of World War II, anti-Semitism has often hidden behind legitimate criticisms of the actions of the government of the State of Israel, making it even more dangerous. But Jewish people have been targeted by this sort of hatred and vilification and dehumanization for centuries. 
There's a reason why anti-Semitism is sometimes called the mother hate. Because, in Western civilization at least, that's what it is. It has existed in our history, in our art and literature, in our religion. For as long as Western culture has existed, it has been with us. It has been the driving force behind some of the most horrific atrocities ever committed. And to this day, Jewish people are targets of discrimination and violence because of it. Do I think Brian Kendrick intended to promote or endorse any of that? Do I think he wanted credulous, impressionable wrestling fans to be introduced to these ideas through him and start down a road that would inevitably lead some of them to ideologies that are unrepentantly hateful and vicious? I honestly don't know. But, like I said, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and assume that he didn't want to do that. But that's what he did, regardless of his intentions. That's what he did, regardless of how sorry he is about it now. That's what he did. There's a tendency among many of us to treat belief systems as though they're morally neutral. It seems like a tolerant and enlightened approach at first. Why be judgmental of others' beliefs? Wouldn't the world be a boring place if we all thought the same way and believed the same thing? Maybe we should all just learn to embrace the diversity of thought, and when we're arguing with someone and we reach an impasse, just agree to disagree. We should still be able to shake hands and be friends, right? I find this odd. If the disagreement at hand is over something innocuous, yeah, absolutely, no hard feelings. You're a Yankees fan, I'm an Orioles fan. No big deal. I mean, if there's a hell, you're definitely going there, but that's not up to me, not for me to judge. We can still be friends. But if you hold and espouse a belief system that frames an entire group of people as villains on the basis of nothing other than bigotry, and that promotes ignorance and paranoia and unfounded suspicion and intolerance, and that has connections to other beliefs that have motivated some of the most appalling crimes against humanity ever committed, how is that morally neutral? I think a lot of people who believe in conspiracy theories are probably like Brian Kendrick, dipshits who are drawn to these ideas because they make them feel like they're in on something everyone else is missing. They get to tell themselves they're smart without having to actually put in any of the work to, you know, learn things. They watch some videos, browse some websites, and tell themselves they've got it all figured out. Just reject whatever the official story is and say it was actually aliens, or the CIA, or, as it always is, ultimately, the Jews. Conspiracy theorists often claim that their ideas promote critical thinking, but they actually do the opposite. They tell people to reject expertise, to accept vague speculation and innuendo as evidence, and to treat questions as though they were answers. People who believe and spread conspiracy theories haven't thought through the literal, factual implications of the claims they make. Given that, it's no wonder most of them haven't thought through the moral implications either. If you're the parent of a child who was murdered at Sandy Hook, does it matter? If some of the people claiming that you and your child are crisis actors perpetuating a hoax don't really mean it? If you're a journalist being harassed by people who accuse you of suppressing the truth, is it relevant that some of your harassers are just trolling? If you're a Jewish person whose synagogue has been targeted by a mass shooter or whose cemetery has been vandalized by white supremacists, do you care that some of the people spreading anti-Semitic canards don't actually believe in them? So yeah, I'm glad Brian Kendrick lost his spot with AEW. It's a shame, because he is genuinely a talented wrestler. I've enjoyed his in-ring work a great deal over the years. But the views he expresses in those videos not only suggest that he's not a terribly sensible or thoughtful person, they're seriously harmful. Because no matter how laughable they may seem on the surface, all conspiracy theories 
if you follow them long enough, can take you to dark places.